All right, so you see he's doing a lot of shorts. Crouchy short. Crouchy short, right? And you see Nuki's trying to fish for it, for the timing, right? You see that low forward, why it whiffed? Okay, now watch this. Bang. So how does somebody get the timing? YouTube video starts right now. What up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Shoutouts to Punk for this formula because I'm definitely copying his style. Today, we are going to be continuing our footsies fetish series episode numero cinco number five the topic will be about countering fan attacks so the theme of the chapter two of the footsies hand guide has been revolving around light attacks so now let us begin okay element number five if your opponent starts overusing the faint explained above take a quick step forward and attack with your strongest combo in sync with their rhythm light attacks may be fast but they're certainly not immune to mind games mind games go, 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 go. all right mike watson is known for making excellent use of such fakes but onuki or nuki as we know him his uh 3s chun li found a way to make him pay so we're gonna have examples of this element number four was when your opponent is looking to punish a standard poke or a poke that would typically be pressed at a specific range, you would just walk to that range and whiff a light attack and bait their reactive poke, the reactive style, and then you whiff punish their poke, right? That's the element number four. So to counter somebody doing this to you, you basically want to take a step forward and then try to catch the rhythm of their feint attack, right? So instead of playing further away, you would take a step forward and you would poke them. So we're gonna see an example of how Mike Watson does this in other games, and then you're gonna see you're gonna see Nuki punishing the shit out of him for doing it in third strike. Okay, so this is a ST example. If you watch very closely, he's Ryu, right? Watch he does crouching light kick right about. Let's rewind that. Right there. Okay, so I'll run it back a couple frames. That's crouching light kick, right? So now the Cannon player, his opponent, sees. The animation he's probably already committed to the whiff punish so he doesn't differentiate what the poke is okay he's just looking for anything and he tries to go and poke with a sweep and then he gets sweep punished okay so he tries to sweep the light but the light's so fast that the ryu recovers in time to block and the the even if he didn't recover in time the extended range of the light attack retracted already so the sweep wasn't going to hit him anyways if it was a medium he would have hovered out there longer because of the retraction period taking longer right so now you see this is how he gets that with punish off okay nice and that's a pretty that's a very strong place to position uh, to place that that tactic because it's after a neutral jump it's after a big activity usually big activity follows big activity right so if somebody jumps dashes whiffs a heavy they usually will follow it up with something bigger bigger and grander right if it doesn't work but he neutral jumped and whiffed the light and baited so that's very strong like look at this neutral jump short with and then he baits the sweep and now he reacts with a whiff punish so it's pretty good stuff right there so now that tactic we will see how Nuki counters it. Just down a little bit. So you see, you see, he's playing Ken. All right, Nuki's playing Chun. Mike Watson, the same guy we just watched, is playing Ken. So fundamentally, this is something he likes to do in footsies. All right, so you see he's doing a lot of shorts. Crouchy short. Crouchy short, right? And you see Nuki's trying to fish for it, for the timing, right? You see that low forward, why it whiffed? Okay. Okay, now watch this. Bang. So how does somebody get the timing? Well, the thing about the timing is you want to pay attention to when does the opponent shift into that mindset of doing it. So some people, they walk up. Let's watch Mike Watson and see if we can figure out when does he do the feints. Because he could just be doing it randomly, or so he thinks he's doing it randomly, but it could just be at a specific spacing that he's doing it, right? So could it be a range thing? Let's find out. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so he's walking forward before he's doing it. Do you see this? He's walking forward, right? See? 
He doesn't really move back and do it. He's moving forward. So now that could be used as a tell. See, look. Walk forward, light kick. Right? Walk back, walk forward, light kick. You see that? So now you can use the walk forward as a tell into his rhythm. Okay? Of when he wants to do it, essentially. So let's fast forward to the next round. And you see it's the same thing. This is the round that Nuki hits him with the low forward super buffer. You see he's walking forward and doing it. He doesn't really walk back and do it. Right? A am I lying, guys? Can you guys confirm? Can you guys see this? When he's doing the crouching light kick, it's after a forward movement. He's not really moving backwards and doing it. You see, he moved back slightly, but he's a naturally aggressive player. So he's telegraphing it. His intentions, right? Now... Ah... Uh, was that a deviation? Nope, he still walked forward. He still did it. Look, he still walked forward and did it. Still, okay. Okay. Still, walk up, walk back, walk back, walk forward, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. What is it? Oh, okay. So he's still. The skeleton of his philosophy is to walk forward, press light. So now you can use that against him and look what happens. Boom. You see that? So this isn't hocus pocus. This isn't guessing. This is all understanding. Of course, there's. it's not guaranteed, right? Because there's timing. There could be luck. And maybe his, his temperament changes. Maybe he gets frustrated and you don't realize. There's a bunch of variables. But the idea is to just collect as much information uh, in a very simple way so that you don't overwhelm yourself and you can still act on the information, right? But to do so in a way where as accurate as possible so even if you are wrong, you're okay with the decision that you made. That's how you become a stronger player. So see, if he had, if, if Nuki had pressed that low forward when he walked back, that wouldn't have made sense. See, now imagine how many times you do that as a player where you press a button but you don't take into account when are they actually pressing their button that I'm trying to hit. You're not paying attention to their movement. See, so if he had pressed it when Ken was walking backwards right here, that would have been wasted movement, right? And then now he's losing confidence in his read. But instead, boom. Look at the timing. You see that? They both crouched at the same time. So now, what are, what are my initial interpretations of this? Very useful in Street Fighter V. Uh, due to priority system. So obviously the priority system exists in Street Fighter V and uh, because it exists, it's going to be a lot more rewarding for you to throw out attacks when you see that your opponent is using lighter, faster attacks, right? Because typically when, when characters or players have life lead and it's like a significant life lead, your opponent is like a light attack away from getting killed, they're going to use a lot of light attacks. But because of priority in this game and crush counters and stuff like that, uh, you can get a massive reward off of sniping the timing of something that your opponent is doing. Uh, another thing is that it helps you uh, track opponents' intentions through movement, minimizing risk from whiffing mindless pokes. Especially in an offensive game like Street Fighter V, you don't want to give your opponent opportunities, right? Because whiff the attacks equal opportunities for your opponent. That's something that's very important to emphasize. If you whiff an attack and somebody jumps at you, even if you block, that's not good because now they're in on you in throw range with a lot of advantage because of the jump in, right? So you don't want to just whiff things even if somebody doesn't hit you per se. Uh, you want to be precise. You want to have that precision because it'll minimize the risk that you take in your footsies, in your neutral in general. And these type of principles apply to defense also and offense when you are on offense and you have somebody cornered you don't want to give your opponent opportunities you want to understand what do they seek and play around that right you want to play around and counter it or you want to play around in a sense where they can never truly capitalize based off of the way they play tactically speaking okay all right do i have anything else um let me see Uh, a great way to induce hesitation in your opponent, okay, and hesitation equals getting your opponent out of their natural rhythm, which equals 
them or they are less likely to win when operating outside of their comfort zone which could be timing uh spacing uh intention uh certain tools in their tool set when you do stuff like this it makes people hesitate they're like oh shit and then they start to second guess everything and then that hesitation ends up leading the walk-in like forever said okay does that make sense so let us play uh i'm gonna try to play who do i want to play this with? i don't want to really play this with sagat um who's a character i think akuma honestly i think akuma's a pretty dope fussy's character to practice this stuff with Yeah, he doesn't really use lights. Okay, so the thing about this element is I had a feeling it would be the hardest one to practice out of the five so far because it has it relies on somebody even knowing enough about footsies to use feints. So he doesn't his footsies are okay. He just his footsies are like he just reacts. He doesn't really have like um like a meaning beyond like layer one, which is just like oh, I'm gonna just dance here and then whiff stuff, whiff punish stuff. Even though he's a he's a decent Akuma, he's still not doing the things that I need to practice, right? So I have to somehow run into people that are going to use the light attacks in the way that I'm looking for, so I can practice it. You know what I'm saying? Try to DP that. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna find anybody that's gonna play like that. And the, the thing about Street Fighter Five, man, is like heavies are encouraged so much because of a uh, crush counter. So this is like gonna be one of the hardest elements to practice consistently. Ah oh, shit. Yeah, this this shit is not this is not gonna happen. So you see how why it's so difficult for me to want to fucking train in this game, and people play like this. It's not his fault. He doesn't know right. Like, can't do it by yourself see like even i'm limited i'm limited right now in practicing this because these people just don't really want to play it but that's why i have you guys here so i'm about to make a battle lounge and one of you one of you beautiful people is gonna help me do this So what I'm basically doing here, right, is uh, I'm getting his attention onto this, right? And then I walk up and I go, see, like that, just to lure out the the whiff punish, like that, you see? So I'm doing the walk up low forward, walk up low forward, walk up low forward, and then I faint. You see, like that. So does that make sense? You guys see what I'm talking about? How it's just like you, you govern their focus, like you shift it towards a certain tool a tactic whatever and then you use the feints to lure out what is on their mind what are they gonna do about that the thing that i was abusing the feints basically lure it out you see what i'm saying ah 
That was really good. Nice. That was good. You got it right at the, um, you got it right on the, the light attack. Cheap, you cheating, motherfucker! <laughs> Bro, our buttons are OD. So when I'm playing Silver, what I'm noticing is uh, when I put him in block stun and I push him away, he tends to retaliate because you see his movement is defensive. The way you know somebody's movement is defensive is who's in front of the blue line. He's further away from the blue line and I'm close. I'm more over it from my original position, right? So now he's being more aggressive because he probably hears me streaming, right? But then that's where you use your buttons to stop somebody from moving forward. So now I induce hesitation and now I can start doing stuff like this with punishing him. Like that. There you go. There you go. So right there, like in that situation where you see your opponents whiffing a lot of light attacks, you just want to space out your heavy attack so that they don't whiff punish you, but that your hitbox is out there and it, it crush counters them or something like that. You could use stand medium kick to do the same thing also. Right? So you could use that opportunity to force the priority system on your opponent okay so when i was playing you in footsies what was happening was i would hit you right silver and then like you were you were more defensive because you just weren't comfortable you're in your mind you're preoccupied with doing well doing right a certain result right but instead you should be practicing everything every everything should have your attention other than the result what i mean by that is like practicing something but not worrying about if you're doing it right or wrong because eventually your muscle your subconscious mind will correct itself because it understands what it needs to do you've played the game enough to know right you were playing more defensively and cautious because there was like a con there was a conflict in your mind where it was like you know it, you're like it was just very discomforting on your part 
Which would make sense because you're not used to playing without fireball. That makes sense, right? Totally different. That's good, though. But now, next time when you do play like that, right? Just solely practice experiencing. Don't worry about the result. I, that's something I've, I've wanted to stress with you guys as I've been uh, away from the game is prioritizing experiencing. The experience itself should be the result. I mean, the, the, the goal, right? And then the results are just byproducts of the result that you get from focusing on your experiences. If you prioritize results, you will stop yourself from being able to experience things that are necessary on your path of growth. Because in your mind, the result is my way or the highway. It's like, if I don't get this, that means I'm not doing good, right? So you kind of break your teeth to try to force a result. But then you need to you need to suffer. You need to fall on your face and understand what does and doesn't work. So knowing what does work is important. But what, knowing what does not work is more important. Because there are more likely things that do not work than things that do work. Does that make sense? So you have to focus more so on... The things that probably won't work and you have to experience them for yourself so they become your own truth because I could tell you something but when you listen to what I say you're listening to what I say with the idea of perfection like this is the answer no it's not the answer what it's telling you is to learn how to experience it in this way so you can figure out your own answer does that make sense because my style of footsies are gonna be different than your style of footsies because it's just expression at the end of the day but the idea of the concepts is to show you what's possible in terms of organizing information you know what i'm saying that's the point of this it's not to tell you this is how you play the game it's not to tell you that if you don't do this you're a bad player or whatever it's just to show you that this is what's possible when you understand these concepts looks like that is it for me with street fighter tonight guys we had some pretty good uh experience today that was a very fruitful stream even though we didn't get 20 games i felt like i got more and those, what was it? The six battle round, battle lounge match, five battle lounge matches I played. Then I did and 40, 50 games of doing another element. You know what I'm saying? So that was pretty cool. And it was dope because we were all on the same page. You know, like Silver is still getting used to it, but Keltrosity, uh, I know you have more experience. So like you were able to, you know, practice things more consistently, but uh, Silver was still doing his thing too. So it was, it was dope to see it. That was good stuff. That was good stuff all around everybody.